Welcome insiders to Deck Inside. I'm your host, Eric. So I've had an iPad fourth generation for, well, really ever since it came out. And I've really had no reason to upgrade to it, although now there is the iPad Air and the iPad Air 2. Yes, they are better devices than my current iPad fourth generation because they're faster, they're thinner, I like the design better for them, but honestly, they don't really do anything different that my iPad doesn't do, so that's why I haven't updated it or upgraded it, I should say. Well, recently though, with my iPad, I actually cracked my screen. I usually bring my iPad to like school to take notes on and whatnot, and I was in my gym, went to the locker room, managed to break my iPad, so, the really is the glass cracked. The screen actually is fine, just the glass cracked. So I actually did fix it for only around 30 bucks. So I'm gonna show you how I fixed it in today's video. Now the first thing we need to do is simply just get all the materials and all the tools we're gonna need. Now my kit came with a few tools, including two screwdrivers, two screen removal tools, and just some other odds and ends. You're also going to want a heat gun, and that's the very first tool we're actually going to use. We first need to actually heat up the outside of the iPad screen. This is just to loosen up the residue. I was probably heating up the iPad for about 3 minutes. Be careful though, you don't get it too hot, just hot enough around the edges to start having the residue break off from the screen. Once the iPad was hot enough, I used a metal removal tool to start really jamming it in there and start separating the iPad from the actual glass. And I had to use a lot of force here, but eventually I did get it, and I kind of just slid the metal tool down the side of the iPad to start loosening up more of the residue. And since I had another removal tool, this one is plastic, I kind of just used that as a placeholder when I moved the metal tool around. Eventually, I loosened up all the sides and got the glass panel out, though at the bottom there still was glass because that's really where it shattered. So I had to take the metal removal tool and really poke at the glass just to rip it off the metal frame. You gotta really be careful here though because there actually is a wire for the home button. Basically, if your screen was perfect and in shatter like mine, the iPad screen kind of opens up like a book. This will allow you not to actually break the cable for the home button. Unfortunately, I almost ripped the cable, so you have to really be careful. But also, when you do remove the glass panel from the iPad and also get all the glass off the frame, make sure you actually hold on to the home button. The home button mechanism should stay in the iPad, but the actual home button that you see on the screen will actually just come flying out, so just hold on to it so you don't lose it. The next thing we have to do is actually remove the LCD screen, which actually wasn't that hard. I just used a screwdriver that came in the kit, and it came out pretty easily. Just be careful not to really touch the screen because you don't really want any fingerprints on it. Once the LCD screen is unscrewed, we're going to have to remove the ribbon cable that's connected to the iPad. It's going to be covered with a little bit of a black tape, so just rip that off and they can pull out the cable pretty easily. With the LCD screen now removed, we can pull out the other ribbons for the old glass digitizer because we're going to have to replace it. After removing everything, I took some more tools to the frame, just trying to clean it up a little bit more, get any pieces of glass off of it, get any pieces of more residue that I didn't get before. And after cleaning up everything, I noticed a slight problem, and that's that I actually removed the glass frame that was for the iPad. Now I have a black iPad, and there's supposed to be a little strip of black plastic all the way around the iPad, which actually holds the glass panel. I ripped this off when I ripped off the old screen. So you can avoid this if you're careful. Unfortunately, I did not pay attention. I did not realize that this frame was there. So I had to buy a new frame. It was only like $5 on eBay. Not a big deal at all, but just be aware of that. Anyway, once you put the frame in, or if you already have the frame, lay the glass panel right next to the iPad, again, almost like a book, and then plug in that ribbon cable. You can then plug in the ribbon cable to the LCD screen, and then just place it gently on the iPad, and then screw it in place. With the LCD screen screwed in place, I'd recommend taking a nice, like, cleaning cloth to your iPad. Just make sure there's no fingerprints, no little pieces of glass, no nothing. Once all that's done, it's time to attach the glass panel to the iPad. Now, there's no adhesive already on the glass panel, but my kit did come with adhesive strips. Unfortunately, I had no clue actually where to put the adhesive strips, so I kind of just guessed. 
but after putting them in a place that I thought was pretty good, I removed the protection of the adhesive strips and pushed the screen onto the adhesive strips to set it in place. Before you actually push down the glass panel onto the iPad, make sure you add the home button back into the slot where the home button's supposed to go. I completely forgot about that, and I noticed that as soon as I pushed the glass panel down, and it was a pain to get fixed. So be careful, make sure you put the home button in. But anyway, once you attach the glass panel back to the iPad, take the heat gun yet again, heat up the sides again, this time not so much, maybe only for like a minute. This will just get the adhesive warm and make sure it's really gonna stick. But after you have the glass panel in place, just turn on your iPad and make sure it works. Now, if it doesn't work for some reason, you might have already had your iPad on. So in that case, hold down the power button as well as the home button. This will force your iPad to reset and your LCD screen should eventually turn on. So to quickly go over how the iPad turned out, everything is perfectly fine. The glass digitizer is completely responsive. It looks great on the side of the iPad. It basically looks like new. There's a little points here and there that the uh, glass panel seems to stick up a little bit, but that's okay. The problem probably is in one of my corners of the iPad, there actually is a dent, so the glass couldn't exactly fit perfectly on it. In the future, I probably should have actually tried to fix that corner, but oh well. Overall, I have to say, the iPad turned out pretty good. Alright, so there's how I fixed my iPad fourth generation. Now, if you have an iPad Air or an iPad Air 2, chances are to fix it like this, it's going to be a little bit different. If you even can fix an iPad Air, I haven't actually tried to. So realize that, but if you have a fourth generation like me, you crack the screen, definitely take a look at, well, follow my video. Anyway, guys, that is the video for today. If you want to see any of the videos about my iPad, about fixing anything, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, guys, my name is Eric, this is Tech Inside, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.